Once again, this year we'll be hosting Rabati Value Live concurrent with the Mark Cal Annual Meeting. It'll be on Wednesday, May 11th from 10 to 12.30. You'll need to sign up and you need to be there in person because unlike last year, we will not be broadcasting. Here are some clips from last year's event. Sign up now and look forward to seeing you in Richmond on May 11th. How does that work? We talk about value versus growth, right? A lot of that is macroeconomic. The macroeconomic environment of the last decade is one in which financials, materials, uh, industrials don't do well. That's not an economy that is favorable to those businesses. So therefore, that's, I think, part of the reason why you've had this disparity in terms of performance. What I think is the world is changing. I think the COVID actually is accelerating that change. Uh, the first half of the year and even much of the year, there was a continuation of a 10-year trend. I think that trend's at an inflection point today. Greatest reshaping of the global economy that has ever been imagined. So if you want to talk about the TAM of ESG, Today, there is one trillion invested in ESG. But if you look at the UN principles for responsible investing, there is 103 trillion committed to ESG. So last year was an opportunity to take advantage of that Buffett sort of manic depressive Mr. Market and, you know, trim some wonderful businesses like Amazon and Google. And I think the, the one other characteristic I give is that growth versus value became something different last year. It became old versus new. And really, if you just knew the relative age of a company, you had some insight into its relative valuation. And that was particular insanity. So, And so we kind of divide the world in sort of Buffets and Grams. And uh, one thing, again, labels are nice and fun and sometimes help you raise money. Uh, but, you know, everything is connected in some way to, you know, current cash flow plus present value of future, which is an implicit growth thing. So you a general view of the world is um, a stock represents ownership in a business and the value of the business is the present value of the cash flow from now till the end of time. And don't focus on the macro, don't figure, focus on what interest rates are gonna do or what the price of oil is gonna be, but focus on what the business is worth and uh, proceed from there. Hey, um, you know, one thing I would mention, uh, Uvemco has had a long history of uh, uh, being long growth and innovation. So we have a fair amount of exposure to managers who focus on uh, you know, areas like technology and uh, consumer, uh, consumer areas and, and software. And, uh, and, and so those have been very good performers, obviously, in this environment. We've been spending a fair amount of time in the last uh, six months or so just rebalancing, bringing equity risk down a bit. Um, and, and, and rebalancing out of some of these best performing areas. Um, what, is it, what does that look like today in an environment that's even more competitive? Um, you know, Warren Buffett was always very, I think, strict about defining his circle of competence and what does that look like? And he thought tech businesses didn't fall within his circle of competence. But that makes it really difficult if you're kind of going through an age of digital disruption and things are evolving so quickly. So I think, you know, in this sort of market, you just have to be willing to look at things that you might think aren't within your circle of confidence and sort of expand that. I used the downturn of 2020 to put a lot of cash to work and to, you know, add to the portfolio such high quality companies as Progressive Insurance, a lot more Berkshire Hathaway, more Bank of America, uh, you know, some Markel and so forth and so on. In terms of process, we keep it real simple. It's a great business, great managers, bargain price. Uh, that latter criterion is somewhat problematic these days. So we spend 100% of our time on the first two criterion. And the third one, Mr. Market eventually brings it to us and we act. As we know, when you start a business or run a business, like things change, mm -hmm. right? So things come up that you didn't think. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. And it's finding things that are um, managed well and, and operated well and, and where there's smart capital allocation and the underlying growth in NAV is, is continuing apace. So the ability for them to kind of capitalize on that relationship to provide enormous value to the music industry, but also to potentially find different paths for artists to monetize their work uh, and, and different ways to work with the, with the music industry. Thanks for watching. Now you'll need to sign up. There's information on the screen on how to do that. We remind you, unlike last year, we will not be broadcasting the event. 
you'll need to be there live and in person to network with and hear from thoughtful investors like yourselves. See you in Richmond on May 11th.